This is Stephen A. Williams, president and founder of TheCreditRepairShop.com, and in today's video, we're going to talk about payday loan lenders, and specifically some of the ones that are on the Indian tribal territories, because a lot of them are breaking the laws when they're lending to people, and they're using their tribal laws to kind of get away with it, where they're charging excessive interest rates. We're also going to talk about Peterson Asset Management, which is the company or one of the debt collectors that they're using to go after a lot of people. I think you'll find this very interesting. So we're going to first go to look at what they're doing, and then we'll get into what you can do to check if you're dealing with one of these types of lenders. So we can see here, a lot of them are using Peterson Asset Management to go after people. And we can see here that Peterson is in, you know, they're uh, breaking the rules so bad that they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen phone numbers that they're calling people with. They're doing robocalls. They're also going into people's social media accounts and sending them messages in their DMs, which is now legal. Congress passed an act where they can debt collectors can contact you directly in your social media account. And what they're doing is they're looking at, you know, people's profiles and if they're showing that they have money, they're showing that they got cars and all this type of stuff, they're using that against people uh, if they decide to take them to court or, you know, where people say they don't, they don't have the money. And they're able to now use people's social media profiles to kind of tell the judge that either they're lying on there or they're lying to the court. So these are all the phone numbers that they're using. You can see some of the complaints in one of the uh, payday loan lending companies was Easy Cash. And this person here said that they never had an account with Easy Cash. They never done any business with them, never heard of them. And this company had called them and attempted to collect uh, $1,000 from them. And even though they kept telling them that they did not have an account there, they still kept sending them notices. They kept calling them. So I'm going to show you what you have to do because if you're just... Uh, telling them stuff over the phone that's not going to be good enough because they're going to just pretend like they didn't get it. You have to do all of this stuff in writing when you're checking, uh, when you're trying to fight, especially something that's not yours. You're going to have to really put it in writing. You can see here where someone said that Peterson Asset Management is a scam and their workers are very rude. I am reporting them to the FTC, which they can report them to there and, and maybe they'll do something about it. Uh, they said that they had never taken out a payday loan, never heard of the company. They hung up on me and asked, uh, when I asked for validation of the debt in writing, they tried calling back and they were very rude. Again, you cannot ask for validation over the phone. If you ask for validation of debt over the phone, you're not going to get anywhere. Nothing's going to happen and they're going to pretend like they didn't get it. You have to do it in writing and you have to send it to them certified mail and you have to do it the right way. Here's another one here. It said that they had five calls telling them that they applied and defaulted on an instant cash loan online back in 2015. Uh, they never applied for the loan and they're telling them that they need to pay $500 plus interest to avoid legal action. This is bogus. Number one, if they never had the uh, had the loan, that's a problem right there. The next thing is that a debt collector can never uh, threaten to do legal action without uh, taking legal action. When when a when a uh, debt collector threatens legal action, they have to do it within 30 to 45 days, or they're in violation of the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. They have to take you to court if they say that they're going to take you to court. And we can see here that these people never did do it. Also, having that debt back from 2015, let's just say that this individual did have a debt 
uh, with one of these payday lenders back in 2015, you could simply look at your statute of limitations on paying that debt and uh, most states are three to five years or six years. There's a few that have a 10 year statute of limitation and one with a 15 year, but most states uh, with us being in 2022, this would have been past the legal statute of limitations to even be able to collect. And the reason why a lot of these debts are even being sold or this company is coming up with names, I don't know how they're trying to reach out to people claiming that they owe the debt, is that, uh, in which we're going to go into, is that a lot of these uh, online payday lending companies are not really established to do business in all the states. Uh, so now we're going to go into the solutions on what you need to do. Let's close that here. Okay, so now, so payday loans, uh, loan collection agencies. So if even if it's a legit, legitimate payday loan that you got, or if it's something that's not legitimate, then you need to file the appropriate paperwork that you had ID theft against you or tell them to send you something in the mail and then that, that also reminds me of something else. A, a, a debt collector cannot call you before they send you the letter. Uh, they have to send you a letter giving you 30 days to dispute any debt. In that letter, that letter has to have everything about the original creditor and the amount and who owns who owns the debt now, uh, which is identifying the debt collector, and then gives you 30 days to dispute. If you don't dispute it in that 30 days, you're giving them a right, a legal right, to place that on your credit reports. Even if it's not yours, even if the debt is not yours, the way that the law is written, if you don't respond in that 30 days, you're giving them a right to place it on your reports. It doesn't mean that everything is all over and you're going to have to pay it. It just means that you're just giving them a right to put it on your reports and that's giving them more uh, 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 tools to be able to try to come after you because then they're going to be messing up your credit. So the next thing that you need to do, we're going to talk about the online lenders. You need to check. If you even if you had a legitimate loan with them and it went bad and you're not able to pay it uh, you need to check and even if you're doing doing business with one of these lending companies and they're out of state they're just online you need to check to make sure they're licensed in your state you can go to uh, your whatever department of your state that handles and manages and license the uh, lenders and they might have one specifically for online lenders or payday loans. The next thing that you want to do is you want to check to see if that they're following the interest rate limit laws. There was a, a company here uh, which, you know, every state is different about with, with what they allow them to charge. But in our state, they can charge 2,000% interest on a payday loan in our state. Uh, at Before the former governor, not the one that we have now, before that it used to be 300% and that was, that's bad. But after uh, the former governor got elected, he increased it to where they could charge 2,000%. So you need to just make sure, even though it's gonna still be a rid ridiculous amount that they can charge in interest, you need to just make sure that they follow the interest rate limit laws because you can void out your whole payday loan if you can find that they did violate that because they can lose their uh, uh, license to even do business in your state if they did, did something like that. Now here's something else that I want you to watch out for. This is how they can trick you and have you end up paying a higher interest rate even though they're stating it uh, that it's, you know, an interest rate that's within your, your uh, law's limits. Uh, the, so the first thing that you need to do is you need to look at your contract and you need to make sure that if they, they might have one interest rate that they're showing, 
but you need to make sure if you made those payments the way that they claim on that contract that it would pay off the loan in that uh, period of time that they're claiming. We had customers that ran into it with payday loans and last year when they had the uh, Santander multi-state settlement, one of the things that was in, that was in the settlement lawsuit that the uh, FTC found was that people had cars and they were paying payments for four, five, six years and then at the end of that time when they thought the car would be paid off, they owed like twenty or thirty thousand dollars and that's because the contract uh, did not really state the true interest rate. So the, the, the simple way to find out your true interest rate is to just do your payments that they're putting on your contract and if that does not end up with zero when they said that the, if you got a one year or 24 months or whatever the time frame is, if it, if it doesn't equal zero at the end of that time period, then you know you have a problem with the stated uh, find the stated interest rate. The next thing is when a lot of people do this, they refinance their payday loan, and what they do is they end up putting the principal and interest from the previous loan. They'll throw that on to the new loan. So you have to watch out because that's a way that they can cheat and actually charge you a higher interest rate. Because what they're doing is they're going to put these two together. They're going to put these two together and then they're going to give you a new principal balance. That new principal balance. And when you look at that, you're going to say, well, this was like me getting a loan from the mafia. Because that's one of the techniques that they did. It When you made payments to the, to the mafia boss and you missed your payment, they would always say, well... Instead of that interest that you were going to pay, we're going to put that on top of the principal. So now you have a new principal amount, and then we're going to still charge you interest. But see, they can't do that. The mafia might be able to do it, but the companies can't legally do it. So you, what you do is you have to pay attention, and then once you look at what your new principal is and your interest, they could be in violation of those laws right there. You know, you, you're, you're going to have to look at the, your paperwork. You have to look at your new paperwork if they ended up doing something like that. And then you can, you're going to have to figure that. So now also watch out, which we talked about a little bit. And we're talking about Native uh, Americans, not uh, Native American Indian, not India overseas. Uh, a lot of people, these are usually not these individuals that live there. Uh, they might get with one of the tribal leaders and set up an agreement so they can use that address because just in case you don't know this in the United States any Native American uh, lands they're under their own tribal law so anything that happens in there it's, un it's not under United States laws and so what a lot of companies have been doing especially payday loan companies is they'll pay the tribal leader a little bit of money so they can establish the address. They'll give some of the people from that community jobs. And then they're running everything for their online payday loan business out of that supposed location, which they're really not because they're just using computers from somewhere else. But they're using that address as their base. And so what that does is it allows them to break a lot of laws. It, some of them will even say that we don't have to be registered in your state because we're registered on this Native American territory and we don't have to follow the United States laws. We just have to follow their laws and their laws say if we want to do business with anybody in the United States as long as we're based here we're able to do it. And it's a great area. We even see it here. There's a, a, a casino, Potawatomi Casino. They're under the same rules. Years ago, they threw slot machines in there without getting approval from the state. They did a whole bunch of things. But that little territory, even though it's like smack in the middle of our city here in Milwaukee, that is considered uh, tribal lands, and they're under different rules and restrictions. Yet yeah, Now, you can't do... Uh, things to break laws with that but they are they're able to to do that 
So be very careful when you're dealing with these online payday lenders. So I'm going to end the video here. If you need help with your credit, please visit us at thecreditrepairshop.com. Watch the video, What Makes Us Different. And I'm going to show you here. I wanted to utilize this for this example here. I'm going to show you... Uh, Go here, let's go here. And so when you go to our website, I want you to go to this page. You see that picture of me? That's how you know that this is the real website. There's some people that's been trying to kind of scam and imitate us. So you go here, go to the website, you'll see here these are my scores. And then you can go to this video right here. This video here, I'm going to be making an update to this, but this here shows the way that we repair credit. It takes time, but this is the process that we use. And then you can always go and look at testimonials if you either want to read them or you can watch this video. This is a video showing over one hour's worth of uh, clients where we've gotten them the results that they want. It shows deletions of bankruptcies all the way to child support all the way to just regular accounts. I'll also show you some examples, uh, well not examples, I'll show you some uh, results from clients where we had uh, gotten uh, credit card debt where it was uh, uh, forgiven in a 10, 1099C debt cancellation. Here you can see this one here, Chapter 7 Bankruptcy Discharge, it was deleted. You can see here civil judgment was deleted off their account so these are results from our clients you can see here medical debt deleted you can see here this is a collection agency in our area all of these are deleted no longer on the file here goes some more medical debt these are all deleted these are all from customers that just mailed us their results and you can scroll through and you can see those then if you want to look at our plans for signing up on our with our service just click here to see the plans and pricing and then that's going to take you to a page where you can see the different plans it's running a little slow here look like we froze up on there but when you click here you'll see our plans and pricing and here we go so you can see here our, our website is protected, you know, so you don't have to worry about doing transactions on here. There's a video that shows you what happen, happens next after you sign up. It goes through the process of what uh, we're going to be calling you and getting all of your information. You can see our different plans that we have here. And then you, you know, if you choose to sign up, you just click one of the buttons pick your plan and we can get get uh, get to work helping you with your credit all right thank you for your time